Well, greetings, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining our PPP training. We hope you enjoy the experience. What I want to do now is to take a moment of your time and help explain why we're here, what we're trying to achieve uh, this training this week. What we're trying to do is to give your governments a different way of working. We're trying to give you a different way of meeting the needs of your communities. Why are we trying to do this? Because the current way of working is great, but it has some serious limitations. Let me explain. The way governments typically work is that they find an investment project. It might be in infrastructure, or it might be in the social sciences, it might be in social services. Then they go to the budget in order to build something. Then they operate the project. The problem with this approach is that government budgets are extremely tight. Governments do not have the money to deliver all the services that people need. Now, that's strange because if I walk around, I see a lot of people in need of a service and they're prepared to pay for the service. They are willing and able to pay. What we're trying to do is to give a way of working that can mobilise that willingness, that ability to pay. What we're doing is allowing the private sector to come in and to finance and then run a government, a project on behalf of government. And this is transforming the current dependence on budgets. Budgets are too tight. Budgets cannot do everything. Is there another way that we can help your government deliver essential services to your communities? And the answer is yes. By the end of this week, you should see the different ways that can be done. You should be confident that you can do it yourself. And if we achieve that, this week is a success. I wish you very well in the week. Welcome to this e-learning series on public-private partnerships brought to you by the World Bank and DFID. In this first module, you'll learn what are public-private partnerships, including the definition, the rationale, and the objectives. You will also learn the various forms that they take, and you will learn the project management cycle, what it takes to bring PPPs, as we call them, to the market and successfully conclude them. I want to let you know that there is no single hard and fast definition to what a public-private partnership is. And what you will learn is that there's also different ways of delivering PPPs. It is important to note that the teaching method we use is a participatory one, meaning that you will see we will ask our audience members questions. They will also ask us questions. This is a dialogue, not a lecture. The other thing you'll notice that you will be able to draw on the knowledge and experience of some of our audience members who will provide examples and questions concerning projects they're involved with. So let's begin by looking at what a PPP is. This is our first session, and I'm just curious when, let's think of a public, what a public-private partnership is. So let's say you need a new school and so you're going to, you're, you're in the government, you need a new school, you design what the school is going to look like, you uh, find the, the legislature, the parliament provides funding for the school, but as, let's say you're in the Ministry of Education, you then hire a private construction company to build the school. So the government is designing the school, the government is going to fund the school, but a private construction company will build the school. Is that a public-private partnership? So we're going to learn here, there's, there's definitely a distinction. It's not simply engaging a private company to do something for you. We're going to see what it involves and the different elements in a public-private partnership. So what we find, there's, there's no single definition of really what a public-private partnership is. So in, this, in this session, I will provide you uh, some elements of a definition, but it can really, a public-private partnership can uh, be a range of possible relationships. It, it can take a lot of different forms. Uh, and so I, one of the things I like to say is I, I don't get 
too wrapped around the axle of what a, a public-private partnership is and is not, uh, you know, in terms of definition. You know, another way to think of it is it's an alternative delivery mechanism for public projects or projects that will serve, more importantly, a public purpose. So in terms of a definition, the, these are the characteristics of a public-private partnership. Probably a better way of thinking of it than a single definition. So there is going to be a contract. That's what holds this thing together as a legal agreement. Congratulations on completing the first assignment for Module 1 of this course. We hope that by undertaking this exercise and applying what you've learned, you better understand the principles of PPP frameworks. Here are some takeaways from this first module. In this module, we learn that a public-private partnership involves a range of relationships between the public and private sector in the delivery of public infrastructure and services. That public-private partnerships must generate value for money and that they must be affordable, bankable, manageable, and acceptable. And finally, what we learned is that a public-private partnership involves some combination of the private sector designing, building, financing, operating, maintaining the project. It can involve all those elements or some combination thereof. In this module, we've also learned several key points which I'd like to review for you now. Number one is that PPPs can be flexibly applied to meet the unique needs of each project. And each PPP project is complex. Number two, is that before we can do PPP projects efficiently, including the preparation, the feasibility analysis, and the tendering, we first have to have a clear policy and legal and regulatory framework. Number three, PPPs require more time and effort up front to identify all the risks, analyze risks, and very clearly allocate the risks to each party in a PPP contract. This means we have to carefully manage the workload in preparing and implementing PPPs. The bargain that we have to be willing to strike is that we'll spend more time and money up front preparing a project better as a PPP in order to get the long-term value for money benefits over the entire long-term life of a PPP contract. And then lastly, point number four, the most difficult challenge in making PPPs work in practice is stakeholder management. Oftentimes, those are different stakeholders within the public sector. That's why it requires high-level leadership and political commitment to the long-term policy of PPPs in order to manage them well in practice. Thank you for joining us and participating in this first module. Please join us for the second module where we will focus on PPP project identification and screening.